so happy to be here uh, today. Actually, you said it was the first anniversary of the workplace empowerment. It's also my first year anniversary with Equity Bank. So <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I want to talk to you about a few things. You you can read where I come from uh, if uh, if that's uh, useful. But uh, when Vern and Ricky met me just a year ago, actually it was in August, and uh, they convinced me that uh, there was something that I could help her equity with. I thought that through. I had, as you know, already taken some some times off, two years in retirement. I was failing at retirement, and I decided to come back. And the three reasons I gave Vern and Ricky why I wanted to come back and join the team was, first, the challenge and the opportunity to disrupt the lighting industry, which is the core of what I do, uh, really bringing technology into our, our luminaires. The second reason was the team. I really liked uh, the team as I met uh, you, some of you early on. And the third one is the, is the culture. And I have to say that, a year after joining Equity Brands, I am at a whole time high on my job satisfaction. And this is because of the same three reasons. We are really making headways in disrupting the lighting industry. We started with retail. Now you, you won't be able to avoid going to a retail space that doesn't have our lights, that doesn't have our lights with the technology we embed and creating a different experience in the early days. I have really enjoyed, and uh, it's not just uh, the partnership that exists between Vern and Ricky, but the whole team. And finally, the reason was the culture. And so when, uh, I would say it was two months ago, uh, Vern, when we really started about strategy deployment. Uh, to me, the big point was we always had growth and performance, but when the three of us said we need to have something about culture, and I said, well, that's great, that, that's exactly where I would like to contribute. So Vernon Ricky said, Lord, you seem passionate about it, so go ahead and have a go at it. Um, why is that so important? And so you're all familiar with our matrix, uh, strategy deployment matrix. Why is it so critical today to choose a breakthrough objective on culture? Culture can be so many things, it can be vague, it is something we feel, it is something we experience, but at the end of the day, when you look at what an engaging culture does, it drives results in the company. We had a seminar, we had a workshop uh, with, uh, with some of the people and we said, if we think of culture as a soft thing, you know, the thing where we feel good, that's only one part of it, that's, that's probably there. But really, an engaging culture, a workplace that is really empowering, is first and foremost driving performance. And again, how you express that is in engagement of associates. We decided at Acuity Brands that, for you reference, uh, Claudia, that we would focus really on, on three dimensions of our culture. And on this one, we said associate engagement is probably the biggest entitlement, the biggest opportunity for us to have a highly engaged workforce. The second part was, same is true of customers. We intimately believe that there is no employee engagement and customer satisfaction. The two of them come hand in hand. If you have employees that are interfacing with your customers that are not fully engaged, fully what I call fulfilled, it will reflect on the customer base and vice versa. The focus on customers is the success of the company. And third, and Barry was here, has done a fantastic job of saying, Surely we have our associates, we have our customers, but we belong to a larger world, we belong to a community. How do we want to influence positively that community? And uh, you will see what's coming up together uh, during these uh, breakthrough objectives. We're going to have, of course, our famous uh, annual improvement plans. 
But we're going to start by defining the purpose, the vision of what we're trying to accomplish. So here in this room, Karen, once again, is uh, stepping up. Uh, I have a lot of the SVPs that have volunteered and say, yes, this is what we want. We want to take equity brands to a fully engaged workplace, empowered workplace. So that's what we're going to be uh, driving uh, through many different activities. What I recognized very early on is the first thing about thinking about culture is you build from the strength of the culture that exists. We have an incredible foundation. Again, I told you, I came here because I love the culture as it is today. ABS, the culture of continuous improvement, it's there. It's in, it's in the making of, of everyone. When you come and work at Equity Brands, it is pervasive everywhere, Claudia telling you after my, my one year. So we have that, that point of strength. We have an ability to attract people that will come, and when we look at our em last employee survey, there were three things that stood out. First and foremost, the number one satisfaction that we get is working with great colleagues. It was overwhelmingly the number one thing that we are very proud to be industry leaders, but we are very proud to have challenging work, but even more so, we love the camaraderie, the esprit de corps, the fact that we're working with great people among each other. So we have some really strong elements of our cultures that are going to pave the way for what we want to do next. So I think, Karen, I'm going to keep this to a, a broad presentation. Uh, what you're going to see coming uh, along with the annual improvement plan is first taking stock of what already exists and that can be actually architected into this culture BTO. We're celebrating today the first year of the Women's Network. We are also officially today announcing, if I'm correct, the next network, which is going to be a network for our minority associates to have also an element of expression. And I can share with you, we have, I've done that before and so on, we believe also that we should have a network of what I call emerging leaders. Uh, as you know, in this country, we can't uh, talk about age. The idea is there is a lot of millennials here that have a different perspective on what drives culture, what drives performance. How do we create a network we have the women's network, we just officially have the minority network of people that are what I call emerging talents. You're younger in your career, you're newer in your career. How do we get you networked, not theoretically, not because you belong to an organization, and really push the organization to the next level? So, this one is not yet there. Today we're celebrating one year anniversary of our women's network. We are officially announcing Thank you, Crystal, and all of you. I don't know exactly. I think you will talk in a minute as to where we are uh, with launching this. So expect more activities, but the main thing for us is to come in front of you with an overall purpose, mission values, starting from the strength, and then deploying with you the improvement, the annual improvement plan. So, Look up for uh, a few things. I said to a, my team that I would be recruiting, we are going to be looking, so think about that, for some champions throughout the organization that are going to help us drive this engagement. So today, I'm officially opening my own recruitment campaign to get some people <laughs> to help us uh, with this. Uh, see me at the end, it's just like a church sit me at the end of the, uh, of, 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 of the service because uh, I want to see if there is, I believe there is a natural desire for people to actually contribute to these uh, breakthrough objectives on our cultures.